is right there. What is the truth? Oh, yeah, I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. I, just as a warning, of course, if you can answer this question, then I will die just a little bit in my soul. I agree. Uh, I think you can also agree that if you say, well, you just bring the power down and reduce it by one, I will definitely die a lot in my soul. Because that's just really ridiculous. So, what is a derivative? Rate of change. What kind of rate of change? Instantaneous rate of change. I like it. That is exactly what I was hoping you would say. I suppose if we were referring to a graph, you would also say it is the question mark. Tangent slope. Yes, sir. Slope at a point. All right. Um, now. All the definitions of the derivative accomplish that instantaneous rate of change in some fashion. How does, how does it work? How does, let's look at the original definition of the derivative. How does that work? How does it accomplish instantaneous rate of change? What does each piece do? To me, there are two pieces. The inside does what? This part. What does it do? Oh, oh. So, okay, it's slope where it's change, slope slash change between two points. And what is this? Yeah, it gets the points close together. And so, change, average change starts to become. Instantaneous rate of change gets the points close together. That is the heart of differential calculus, not integral calculus, but that is half of all calculus. Now, we typically um, do this one way. We say, if I want to estimate f prime at 3 or dy dx at 3, the instantaneous rate of change, it can be approximated by the average change. The average change in this case being, I guess we would have to choose. If I want to estimate the change at 3, what's one way I could go to find the change particularly at 3? I could go 2 and 4. In that case, I'd be using what kind of approach? The two case approach? Symmetric approach. The symmetric approach, right? Okay, uh, could I use 3 and a 4? Yes. yes. Could I use either of the two points? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What if this had been uh, 1 and 4? Could I use either of the two points? Yes. The limit idea really says you should choose as tight to 3 as you can, right? So you sh I think in, if you were going in with 1 and 4 and you chose 1, I think you would be violating the limit idea. Yeah? All right. So, uh, in this case, you can go any of three different ways. You guys said this way first, so I'll go with that. The symmetric way works just fine, and that is negative 3 minus 5 over 2, or negative 4, right? Now, the answer is not very important. The point of this is this. We normally estimate a derivative with the average rate of change, but today... We're going to use a derivative to estimate the, wait a second, did I say that wrong? We usually estimate average rate of change with the derivative. No, say that again. <laughs> we usually estimate the derivative with average rate of change. But today, we're going to estimate average rate of change, or true change, with the derivative. Now, that's the idea on differentials. Uh, what is a differential, by the way? Give me an example of a differential. Dy or dx. Those are differentials. I meant to call them infinitesimals. Okay, now then, the idea of differentials that I want you to have down cold is that average rate of change can be approximated by instantaneous rate of change. But really, these are the stars of the show. True change in y can be closely mirrored by dy, which is the differential, where dy comes from just the rate of change times the change in x, gives you an amount of change in y. 
Think of it like if you said dy dx is f prime, then dy is f prime dx, right? Are you with me? Yeah. A picture to me is very helpful here. Imagine if I were looking at some function f of x. And I started at x, changed it some to get to a new point. Now, this actual change on the curve, that's how much y actually changed from. So that's delta y. Right? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Now, had I just taken a snapshot in time and said, at this original point, how was this changing? And assumed that it was going to keep going at that kind of rate of change, then if I assumed it kept going at that instantaneous rate of change, then when I changed my delta x on that, then according to that, I would expect y to change by this much. Now, that would be the idea of using the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change to estimate the change. So this change would actually be the differential or the derivative version of the change, dy. Now, you can see that for small areas, dy and delta y are pretty close. dy here and that right there, they're not bad. And so we're going to use that estimate in many cases because the derivative by often being reduced power or just easier to work with, the differential is often easier to work with than the original. You might, a logical question would be, why estimate with derivatives when you could just find the actual change? In the cases in science especially, derivatives are easier to work with than the original function. So that's why we do this. Uh, so check this out. Uh, if I said the radius of a spherical balloon is three inches, and I asked you to use differentials to estimate the surface area change um, if the radius goes by one quarter inch. Did you, you guys did this with me, uh, Miss Canna, last year? Is that 29? A little? Yes? No? Is this a familiar at all? Uh, okay. Well, here you go then. Um, it it kind of depends on how the order she teaches it. All right, so. Um, so maybe I should back up. Do you, are you, can you get your head around this idea? Are you cool with that? No. Okay. Maybe I should back up a little bit. All right. Um, do you, how about the picture? Does this make sense? Yes. Harsh. Harsh, okay. Safe to go through it again or no? Okay, sure. All right, so let me back up just a little. I don't want to just plow mindlessly ahead if you're not with me. So the idea is that you're going to have a function, and it'll often be at a, at a known starting point or a clean point if you think about square roots or something like that, right? You are looking at what happens when x changes a little bit. If that change is made, then I go to a new x, right? Now, by going to a new x, I'm going to change y from f at the original x to f at the new x. So far, so good? All right. Now, if I actually found those values and subtracted, that would be the actual change in the function. So f of x1 minus f of x initial is the true change in a function delta f or delta y. So far, so good? OK. Now, the idea that we're up today is to use derivatives to estimate that true change. Instead of calculating f, each f value and subtracting, you can use a calculus kind of approach, and it sometimes cuts out some of the work. Now, the idea is if you, you look at how was this changing at this point in time, then if I say how is this changing at that instant, then I would be looking at that rate of change at that instant. Now, that surely would be the derivative, right? Change at an instant is the derivative. Now, it's always going to be, at a number, it's always going to be a linear slope. Uh, if it stayed that way and kept changing at that rate, what would it do? Now, obviously, because this is curving, it's not 
going to be perfect because that rate of change doesn't stay like that. Over here, the rate of change is getting even bigger. So if I have a big gap there, then that's going to be a poor estimate. But close by, it's a pretty good estimate. You follow? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's the part that I have a hard time, time, time wrapping my head around. This um, is delta x, but it's also dx. Okay. Now, the reason is because I this whole slope is obviously dy dx. It's the derivative between any two points I choose. I want to estimate how much x is changing by, not just on the red curve, but also on my black line. So I'm going to say this is change in x, and it, and it would be based on the rate of change at that instant. Now then, if I'm going to talk about change in y at that rate, then I'm really going to think, well, how much would y change on that black line from there to there? And if x changes from there to there, then y would change from here to this point, yeah? Now, this distance here, then, because it's based on the calculus idea, the derivative idea of rate of change at that instant, this is not true change, but dy based on that instantaneous rate of change. Now, pointing to that, then, dy is pretty close to delta y. That's the next big idea. We're going to use dy to approximate delta y. Cool? All right. Now, then. Um, the question then would be, well, what is dy? Well, if you start with the idea of dy usually comes from taking derivative. dy dx is the derivative at some point. Then dy itself would be f prime times dx. Now, that also is a lot of symbol pushing, so let's pause and actually make some sense of that. The change in y would be taking into account how y is changing with x, but then I multiply that by how much I actually want to change x by. You know what I mean? So, for example, if the slope was up, generally, if the slope was up 2 over 1, but I wanted to change x by 3, well, then I would say it's up 2 over 1 times an actual change of 3 would give me a y change of 6. With me? All right. So uh, the change in y will be the rate of y is changing with respect to x times an amount of change. Is that okay? Yes? Okay. Okay. Um, now, Griff, um, say you are working with a sphere, and you had a sphere. Pictures are fun to draw with a radius of three inches. And the ball or the sphere balloon it's pumped up so that now surely the radius is changing so the did I say service, service area will change as well now again I could find true change I could say what's the volume at three and what's or sorry service area at three and what's the surface area at three and a quarter and if I found those and subtracted what would I be finding true change delta a in this case right you with me? Yeah. All right. Now that we could do that, but we're going to actually use calculus to estimate. Uh, again, and you probably you would probably find true change on a case this simple because it can be found easily. This is usually used on really complicated hideous equations. That's why I use differentials. But it's kind of hard to learn on hideous equations, so we're using a simple one. All right. So um, the idea that I'd like you to get across is that I want to estimate true change in area with differentials. So delta A, true delta A, could be approximated by dA. Now dA would come from taking the derivative, or how area changes with changes in radius. Uh, I guess you could call that A prime of R, the rate of change. And then I have to multiply it by dR, okay? Because A prime is dA dR, so dA is a prime times d is the thought process there. So I, I will multiply the rate at which area changes with radius times an amount of change in radius gives me an amount of change in area. You tracking? Okay. okay. 
if I then substitute, what is the derivative, assuming that surface area of its perfect sphere is 4 pi r squared? I'm also going to try and communicate the work I would like to see. What's the derivative? 8 pi r. I would like you to also give me a little evaluation bar. Where are you going to evaluate that at? r of 3 and dr, that which radius will change from. 1 fourth. Um, if you like to put in units, that's cool. I would like to see the general derivative before you still go 3 in. That's just good math. You don't integrate and put the number in. You don't differentiate and put the number in. You differentiate, then put the number in. And so I, I think that's, I mean, that's to me just how good math should be done. So don't be in a rush to put in the 3. Show me the derivative. And then put in what you got. And what do you get? 6 pi. And what are the units on that? Inches squared. Give me one reason why it should be inches squared. Because it's area. It means an area. Why in here would that make sense? What is a prime? What are a prime units? Inches squared per inch. And what are dr's units? Okay. Okay. So just by a little quarter inch, that that's always blows my mind. The dimension kind of thing. A little quarter inch change in radius makes it for a pretty substantial area change, right? Pretty cool. Um, all right. Would you, I don't know why this is a little smaller, but say you then looked at air value. Now, this is where you would use this in a science kind of approach here. Do uh, you often use this to approximate air? The whole group eyeballs the diameter of a ball. So, for example, if I, if I said here, try to... Tell me what the diameter of this is. I mean, even if you put a ruler to it, we would disagree. Most of us would disagree. I mean, we rarely would we all get the same thing, right? So there would be measurement error. There. The same goes with any tool, um, a caliper, anything comes with measurement error. So you will often know that how much measurement error, possible measurement error, uh, you have with using a tool. In this case, uh, the average of all our diameters is about 12 centimeters. But based on the range of measurements, we, there could, we could have as much as measurement error as a half a centimeter, right? Um, surely then, if I use this radius with error to measure something else, like volume or surface area, then that error gets passed on to whatever I then calculate, right? That's called propagated error. Okay, it's built on the original error. So the propagated error then in measuring the volume of the ball is what I'm trying to estimate. My starting point then would be to communicate what you're trying to do. You're trying to communicate to find the true error in the calculation of the volume because of this measurement. Error. This can be approximated with that's where we use differentials. Thank you. With V, okay. Now again, off to the side if you choose, V prime is changing in volume with respect to changes in R. So dV is V prime of R dO. You tracking? Okay. Now we calculate the volume. If the volume, or the derivative of the volume, if the volume of a cube is four thirds, or not a cube, the sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, then the derivative is four pi r squared um, at an r of twelve. Yeah, you know, from this baseline twelve, how much could it be? Uh, and then what is the dr? Point five, a little more. Point five is good, but do I know if I'm five above or five below? Yeah, so it's plus or minus. Okay, I could be above or below by point five. When you have measurement error, unless they specify you could, be, you know, if you're over or less, then it's above or below. So that would mean four pi twelve squared times plus or minus of a half. Yep. 
think the, the radius should be six because it says the diameter. Oh, thank you. And I appreciate your humility. Instead of saying you're an idiot, you say I think it could be. That's great. Yes, you're right. I apologize. So what is? Um, yeah, darn it. All right, so I need to take all of this into account. My bad. So what's the radius? Six. Six. And what about the error? If that's the error in measuring the diameter is one half, then what's the error in measuring the radius? Yeah, 0.25 or one fourth. I like fractions myself. Why does it change? Um, if the diameter could be off as much as oh oh yeah if the diameter could be off as much as a half then the radius would be off as much as that so that half would be on either side yeah or oh, actually it could be. but the radius is only half that do you argue that it should be the same yeah what do you offer I feel like it should be half. Because if it was off by yeah. the maximum of the point five, then the radius would be just half of the like diameter plus point five. Yeah. I, I still say half. I don't. I, I feel like it should be half the error. Half the diameter is half the error in the diameter, right? Well, what do you think? Well, because it wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying if it's on all on one side, it would be like a little But it's not a thing on the other side. How do we know whether the arrow is just on one side or whether it's on both sides? Yeah. Uh, that's a really good question. Well, just like that, like the true. So, like, do an example. So, like, if the yeah. if they measured it to be like if the exact was like ten centimeters or something, and then they so they say they did the guesses and it, it turned out that the mean was like ten point five, and then they divided it by two. Yeah. And that would that would be. It's like five. a shitty. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. assuming that all the error in even. Yeah. 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 And that's like the max error. Okay, now that I can definitely disagree. If, if you're not sure, shouldn't you, in order to be conservative, which in, in at least in social sense, and surely in sense, you should do. Uh, maybe we should take the max error, but I still feel like it should be a quarter, not a half. Mm. I mean, if you measure, ah, yeah, I just don't. I mean, wouldn't. Ah, I, okay, whatever. All right, so let's be, let's go to, I agree with Mr. Babb, let's be conservative, conservatively, we'll go with dr is one half inch, uh, centimeter, excuse me, not an inch, that would be crazy, all right? I'm going to go ask Mr. McKellips after school just to see what he does. I respect him. Great. All right. Um, R.5, whichever you prefer. So, what do we get out of this? Something like 72? Yeah. Plus or minus 72 pi uh, units? Centimeters cubed. Now. All right. So far, so good. Wait, why is it centimeters cubed? Uh, for one thing, it's change in volume. This, these units, the VDR units are centimeters cubed per centimeter change oh, radius. Right. Okay. Yes. So by the when it says like there could be as much air as zero point five, is it? Saying that you could like have zero point five added on both sides. It could be no. In, so if I yeah, basically if I put the ruler to this, then it could be we can't agree with. It could be twelve point five or eleven point five. Say again. It, it, well, it'll say estimate using differentials. Okay. Okay. Now the question is the normal question then is is that a lot? Now if I'm if I'm off a quarter centimeter in measuring. Mr. Ripley, yep. I only got half the amount. Is there anybody else? Oh. 
So, now the question there would, would normally be, all right, is that a lot of error or not? Well, to be off 72 pi cubic centimeters, if I'm measuring a golf ball, is that a lot of error? Yes. Yeah, but if I'm measuring the sum, is that a lot of error? <laughs> no. Okay, so the question of, is that a lot of error? Well, it's relative. It's relative to that which you're measuring. Okay, now true relative error is to take the error and divide by the actual volume or whatever it is of the thing. That's relative error. If we estimate using differentials, then we're going to say instead of true delta y, we're going to use dy as compared to the thing you're measuring. Now, rather than leave it a decimal, it's far more common that you actually express it as a percent error. So you'll take that decimal form of the error as a part of the thing you're measuring and make it a percent. Um, so say we, did I actually, so if we found the percent or percent in relative error for that previous problem, then we would have to take into account, oh, for the previous question, okay? The relative error would be true delta V to V. And we're going to approximate that with dV to V. Now, if you actually already have delta V, then you can just plug it in. But if they just ask this, sometimes it's really helpful to clean up the two functions and then put in the number. So this is what I mean. What is dV? In function form, not the numerical. Sorry. 4 pi r squared times dr, yeah? And what's v? 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this cleans up a ton into something like the pi's go away and r goes away. How do the 4's go? Do they combine or divide out? They divide out. So I'll set this is the same as 3 over r d r. Um, so again, you can see how was, if we didn't have the numerical versions, this cleans up quite a bit. So this, then, is 3 over what was r? 12. And what was dr that we agreed on we'd use? 6. Somebody lied to me. 6. And the dr, we said we're going to use the conservative version 1 half, right? So I'll set then plus or minus 1 fourth or 0 0.25. I should be using fractions with metrics, should I? What are the units on that? Uh, actually, you don't have any units, right? It's dv over v, so there are units. Uh, now, that is relative error. It's a decimal form. The percent error then would be? 25%. Okay. Yeah? I just have a question. When you were doing like, the approximation, so I get that the dv over v is approximately the delta v over v. Uh -huh. Then, can you say equals after the dv? Uh, so that's a good question. In terms of notation, it depends on where your next step is. If I put this, if I put this here, then you can put equals. Then it would be equal. Okay. But um, if I put it below, then it would be approximate. Okay. Maybe that's a fair question. There are really cases where it's like easier to solve the differential and yeah. the error. Yeah. Yeah. I. So this is actually. This, the Lugowski book is what they use at Mines, and it's got some pretty decent, but even the science of that is pretty simple. That's what it says. I don't, I'm not a scientist. You, I'll trust you. Okay, now, one more kind of problem is to, rather than estimate change, estimate value. And we do this all the time with tangent lines, so this will be probably 90% overlap with tangent line, you'll see. Uh, but you could say, I'm going to estimate the square root of 47 using differentials. In that case, the work is slightly different, all right? Now, square root of 47 would be like the square root of 49 plus some change. I mean, do you agree that's kind of a baseline case that's close to 7? You with me? Okay. 
Now then, this would be approximated by, or could be approximated by, square root of 49 plus the idea of the day, dy. Um, at that point, there is nothing in this problem to say what is what. So it, you should probably address the idea f prime or y or f of x would represent what function? Square root of x. That's just good enough. You can't just go throwing y around if it hasn't been defined yet. Okay. Well then, this would mean 7 plus, and what is dy? F prime of x. Yes, yeah? Okay, 7 plus, what is that prime of x? 1 over 2 root x. At what x? 49. At 49. Okay, we would find the rate of change at a good point, right? Um, and dx? Y negative. Yeah, you're going from 49 down to 47. So am I going to be adding to 7 or subtracting from 7? You're going to be subtracting. Dx and delta x are going down to. Okay? So that said, 7 uh, plus 1 over 14 times negative 2 is 7 minus 1 7 or Six and six, six. Okay. Are you getting a feel? Try those two on your own, please. Or with your math amigos. Can you go back first? I can go back for a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
is two. Two is two. Zero point. 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 Z
you, some people do D8 first and then they compare it to the area, and that's fine. Um, I typically start here, go here, but it's up to you. This a lot? 13 point one over one point five. What are we getting there? Thirteen point three three three. Thirteen point three percent. All right, how'd that go? Okay. Good enough. That'll be as good. If you can do that, then you'll be in good shape. Do you have any questions on the volume practice, or can we turn that in? You got the answer yesterday? No. Yes, we did. Well, that gave them a song <laughs> What? Back? This is one way to do this. You could, you could find D A and then D A to A. You, you could do that. You what? Oh, I didn't share. Oh, I didn't put it up. That's fine. Yeah. I was like. So I got one the three because I got two times. Okay. So three <laughs> 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 Okay. Am I, it's this problem, right? The cube and that log? Yeah. Kind of thing. 
So, first of all, the pictures look like. Lay parallel to the y axis. Right? Okay, any other questions on where's my mistake on the volume sheet before we go on to 90? Is it okay if you didn't type in the calculator? Because what if you have the calculator that doesn't charge? <laughs> why do you? I guess my question was, why do you have it on your desk? Why are you carrying it around at all? Oh, I use it. Paperweight? Because I have to conserve battery more tests. Please. <laughs> it doesn't charge. So. No, it has been charged for like three months. And so it has not been battery. I don't have to battery. I'm very conservative. I don't know. I mean, I feel for you. You need to borrow. I got all the answers right. I'll give you a pass here, but you work that out. All right, yes. Exactly. How would that you can buy that. That's what I wrote in the answer because I was like, that maybe there's some no idea. Oh, you are just going by that? Yeah. All right, so 98. 98. 98. 20. 20. 25. 20, 25. Um, 14. Okay. So for 25, so you have a boat going this way, and the rate is in miles per hour. And you have a boat going this way at 4 in miles per hour. Okay? All righty then. What is the rate of change between, what's the distance, what is the distance between the boats 30 minutes after boats leave the buoy? Is this a calculus problem? No. It is not. Okay, so wouldn't you say that you need to know how far this went, how far this went to find that? Yeah? Yes. If this guy went n miles per hour for one half hour, how far, how far did it go? N miles per hour for half hour. How far did it go? And over two miles. If this guy goes four n miles per hour for a half hour, it goes two n miles. So if this guy goes in over two miles, this guy goes two n miles, then this is. Miles. Yeah? Not a calculus problem. Uh, 25, that was 25. 20. Uh, is that the one I changed? Yeah. All right. I'll, all right. I want the volume sheet today, but you can keep 98 if you have questions. <laughs> have a nice day. <laughs> uh, four thirty ish, five ish. You're welcome. Have a great day. That was to me. Yes. I'm still a bit confused. I will look at your work and unconfuse you. So, because 
I didn't know how to do them, so I got so tall. But they they use one fourth here, and then they use one half here. Oh, Thanks, Mr. Anderson. You're welcome. Have a good day. It has to do with how the triangle is oriented okay. here. So I can. All right, in three moments, um, in three, it's the hypotenuse that's down. It's the hypotenuse that's down, which would mean the right angle is sticking out there. If I look at one then, in terms of how to find the area here, the base will be the horizontal distance. Yeah? Mm -hmm. now, we don't want to establish the equity. If this is isosceles, the mean is 45 degrees. Yeah? Yeah. Now, if I split that, then this is still 45, and therefore this would be 45, 45 degrees, yeah. which means this side must be to that side. From that, I can gather that the height must be half the base. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Right, because yeah. this is half the place. Yeah. This is half the place. Yeah. So if I take that in, the height is half the place, it becomes one before. Oh, so that's why they're having Okay. Now, the other one, below the left, there, the leg is in the front of the place. And we're in the middle of the Now, if I put a leg in the middle of the place, then the railing goes there, yeah? Mm -hmm. So if I look at one of those, if this is isosceles, then what's the relationship between uh, uh, the three and the base? So in this case, oh, right, the base height divided by two. So that's the base squared square. over two. Oh, okay. Well, I get it. I get it. You don't need a pen? Do you understand? No, it's fine. It's good. All righty then. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Rickman. Yeah. That second basket from the left is period three, right? From the left yes. is period three. Yes, that's true. Two, three, five, six. How? <laughs> as soon as I heard that, I'm like, that's definitely how it's going to be. Hi. How are you? Oh, you got a stapler. Oh, I'm Hi. Uh, is that enough seats for you or rather something? Yes. Feel free to help yourself. Hey, mom. Why are you in my class? Do you have to pretend to be slurred? Tell me you were back. Yeah. Now you have to pretend to be smart. Good luck. <laughs> especially in this class. It's <laughs> <laughs> easy though. It's especially easy in this class. Marissa, so nice to see you. Uh, it seems like that would be hard to worthy, but really isn't just arbitrary. It looks like it's between 199. What? I'm one. Okay. Um, <laughs> Just so, oh shoot. Wow, I really recorded a long lesson. lesson.